Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with shakshuka. That's right, we're doing breakfast for dinner. Although technically this was originally a dinner that became a breakfast. So I guess we're really doing dinner for breakfast for dinner. But regardless of when you serve this North African dish, it's always comforting and delicious and never not fun to say. In fact, sometimes when I'm not even making this, I'll just yell for no apparent reason, shakshuka. And now that you know about this, I'm assuming you'll probably do the same. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And what we'll do is we'll place a heavy skillet over medium high heat and drizzle in a little bit of olive oil. And as usual, by a little bit, I mean a lot. And then to that, we're gonna add two ingredients, some diced onions, which is very traditional, as well as some mushrooms, which are definitely not traditional. And we do also wanna add some salt at this point. And while the mushrooms are not a classic addition, I really think they're amazing in this. And for me, just make the dish more savory. And what we want to do here is cook these onions and mushrooms, like I said, over medium high heat, for I'm going to guess and say about 10 minutes or so, until they give up any and all excess liquid and start to turn golden. And as they start to take on a little bit of color, that flavor is going to get meatier, and in my opinion, way more delicious. So like I said, we're going to take our time, and we're going to cook them until they look something like this. So those are looking pretty good right there. And at this point, we can introduce another key ingredient, our peppers. And we're going to use three kinds, even though it only looks like two. I have some diced sweet red bell pepper, as well as a red Jimmy Nardello pepper, which is also mild. And then, as you can probably see, one sliced jalapeno. And we will stir that in, and we'll cook that for about five minutes until those peppers start to soften up a little bit. And then once that's happened, before we add our tomato product, what we want to do is add our spices and cook those for a couple minutes in this mixture. So at this point, I'm going to add a spoon of cumin, as well as some paprika. And by the way, any kind of ground chili pepper would work here. We're also going to do a little touch of turmeric, which by all reports is super good for you, and you should try to eat a lot of. We're also going to add some cayenne, of course. You knew that was coming. And then last but not least, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And we'll stir in those spices, and we'll let those cook for a minute or two in this mixture to, as I like to say, wake up the flavors, which really has to do with the flavor of those spices sort of infusing into the oil, as opposed to adding them after the tomatoes go in when everything's kind of wet. And does it really make that big of a difference? Who knows, but why take any chances? So like I said, we'll cook those spices for a minute or two, at which point we can finally add our crushed tomatoes. And of course, unless you're using fresh tomatoes, you're gonna to wanna to use those San Marzano tomatoes. And sure, I guess you could use a lower quality if you wanted, that's up to you. But remember, you're in charge of making sure your shakshuka is off the hookah. So suit yourself, but I'm gonna go with the San Marzanos. And then because I do wanna simmer this mixture for about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and stir in a nice splash of water so things don't thicken up and reduce too quickly. And I would say about medium heat's probably the best, but you can adjust that up or down a little bit depending on what you're seeing in the pan. But I do wanna let this simmer about like that, stirring occasionally for like I said, about 15 or 20 minutes to really give those veggies time to soften up and sweeten up and just generally give all those flavors time to meld together, okay? So I let mine simmer, stirring occasionally, and approximately 15 to 20 minutes later, it looked like this. And by the way, even though we added some salt at the beginning, you definitely wanna taste this for seasoning before we add our eggs on top. So make sure you check this, especially for salt. And then once we've determined this mixture is cooked long enough, what we'll do is we'll prepare the surface for our eggs. And what I mean by that is we're gonna take a spoon and make sort of a depression in that sauce one for each egg we're gonna place down, which in my case is gonna be five. So I'm gonna make five little wells into which we're gonna carefully place our eggs. And to do that successfully, here is a huge and very important tip. Do not crack the egg directly into your sauce. Crack it into a ramekin first because you're gonna be able to see it before it goes in here. Okay, so very important. Crack it into a ramekin first. That way there's no possible way the yolk can break. Whoops, looks like that one broke anyway. So let me rephrase that. By using a ramekin, you can lessen your chances of a broken yolk, but it still could happen. And yeah, I probably should have stopped the camera and fished that one out and had them all come out perfectly, but I didn't. And no, it has nothing to do with ethics or keeping it real. It has much more to do with laziness. Plus, as you'll see, it's really not that big of a problem. So I really wasn't that upset, allegedly. And then once our eggs are down, we will give each one a little bit of seasoning with some salt and freshly ground black pepper. And then all we need to complete this dish is to keep simmering this on about medium heat, I'd say, until our eggs are cooked to our liking. 
which can be, for someone like me, very, very soft, to others who like it cooked all the way through like a hard-boiled egg. And while some people like to pop this in the oven to finish the eggs, I prefer to just do it right on top of the stove with a cover, except I don't have a cover that fits this pan. So in that case, I just use a sheet pan, which totally works fine. And this is not gonna happen super quick, but you definitely don't wanna go anywhere. You gotta pay attention. So we'll keep that covered, and then every once in a while, we'll give our shakshuka a little looka. And right here was kinda getting close. And one thing to keep in mind here, if you want your eggs soft like I always do, you're definitely gonna wanna err on the side of taking this off a little too early, because that mixture is super hot. And by the time you plate this up and find some toasted bread, that egg is gonna to continue to cook. So I gave it a few more minutes, and then right here, even though it was still underdone, I could tell I was only a couple minutes away, so I proceeded on to the final touches, which really you could do at any time, but I tend to do it at the end here. So I'm gonna finish this by crumbling over some feta cheese. To be honest, I usually prefer goat cheese, but this time I did go with feta cheese, which is very wonderful. And then besides the cheese, I'm also gonna give it a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. It's gonna add just a little bit more richness and flavor and also freak out my guests because it looks like raw egg yolk. And then last but not least, a little bit of fresh herb. I'm gonna go with Italian parsley, although I believe cilantro is probably more traditional. And that's it. As soon as you think your eggs are perfect, your shakshuka is done. So let's go ahead and serve this up while it's still nice and hot. So I usually recommend putting some sauce down in the bowl first, and then topping it with an egg, and then possibly more sauce. And then of course we'll finish that with the mandatory slice of toast. I mean, otherwise, what are you gonna sop up all that goodness with? You gotta have some toast. And then my final touch was a few more drops of olive oil. And yes, that was mostly for the pictures. And once I'd taken a few of those, it was time to dig right in. And you'll notice that even though those eggs were pretty soft when we pulled it off the stove, because that mixture underneath is so hot, by the time you serve this up, it should be perfect. And as I mentioned, I do like my yolk a little runny, so this was just perfect for me. Other people like to cook this all the way through, which is fine. Who am I to judge your eggs? But this is exactly how I like mine, and that is just extraordinarily delicious. That beautifully aromatic, spicy sauce, just an amazing thing to poach those eggs in. And while admittedly not maybe the most beautiful thing to watch someone eat, this is just so delicious, so hearty, so satisfying, so comforting. It's just no surprise at all it became such a popular dish in that part of the world. Just a fantastic thing to eat, whether it's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. In fact, there's an old Tunisian saying that basically roughly translates to any time is shakshuka time. And I could not agree more. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.